I've just got back to the farm after the adventure of a lifetime and I need to share it with you guys. It's been a trip that I have dreamt about going on ever since I was really young and into one of the, the final frontiers of adventure and wilderness areas in Australia. To be honest, the world. A landscape that's both harsh and rugged, yet breathtakingly beautiful around just about every corner. An opportunity to try and live off the land. It's gonna go it, it's gonna go it. Oh my God! In the ocean every day. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of small boats, camping gear, a hell of a lot of good vibes and a curiosity to yeah, explore an environment we'd never spent any time in. Seemingly unlimited supply of beautiful fresh water. Hopefully this series gives you an insight into what this country is like and hopefully can even motivate you to go on your own adventure of a lifetime. But for now, let's uh, wind back the clock to day one where it all began on the Blue Highway. Truth. Let's get her on the water. There has been a lot to get to this point right here. Woo! Let's do it. We've been traveling for a couple of hours. We've just come around one of these islands and we can see Pindan, Jack and Eva's boat. Pin Dan's out in the Kimberley! Oh, man. Oh, yeah! Oh, I'm getting your TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. How good's your shirt? Harden up cement powder. <laughs> Alright, what's the game plan, oh. you reckon? You got a spot? I think, yeah, I think we'll head down um, towards the edge of the bay. There's like these creek systems that come out. Yep. And there seems like a deep um, few holes along the cliff face. Go fish them. Supposedly there's dewies and finger mark, I've been told but we'll have to go find out for ourselves. We'll follow you to the camp, eh? Right. Jack and Eva have got a, a camp that they, they found over the last few days, and it, Jack reckons it's that good, mate. We're not leaving, so we'll go check it out. No but, worries. Yeah, run in on the beach, and, and then I'll help you unload. Yeah. You know? We've just pulled into this tiny little sandy beach where looks like someone over the years has built a little bit of a crab shack right on the edge of this escarpment, so we're gonna pull the boat up, grab all the gear out, and then hopefully go for a cruise and further explore. First spot, black tip reef shark. I think we can do a little bit, a little bit better than that for Tucker, so try and get him off. All right, come on, mate, watch out. Watch out, guys. Oh. How do you not just slip on the line? Up to your chest, up towards your chest, that's it, that's it. Yeah, Woody! Well What's, what is it? Keep What's going, it gonna be? Woody. Shark! First fish on the hand line. Oh, it's going towards the motor guard. Oh, oh no! Sharks. Fucker! <laughs> We're not having much luck here with the sharks. We've come to this uh, gutter that comes down from 12 meters to 26, and it looks pretty prime for like jewfish or finger mark, which are two really prized fish in the area. Um, but we seem to only be attracting sharks. Like literally we put the electric motor down and like lines in and then there's two or three sharks just circling the boat, circling the motor around our lines. I think we've caught three sharks, three for three with the sharks. That is not what fishing in the Kimberley is all about. <laughs> it's oh, playing... feel real big. Oh, yeah, shark! Oh no. Ooh, ooh. All right, so that's four for four sharks. We don't really want to eat shark. We certainly don't want to be eating sharks. It's going to be a good pod. Ooh, there's some lovely um, native passion fruit here, but it's not ripe. Hey, that looks pretty good. Oh. No, it was a big brim. Look, a huge silver brim straight in front of the boat on that big bomber. So the boys have just dropped us off. This little inlet here asked us to find some fresh water. I think we've done a pretty good job. <laughs> There's so much of it, it's so clear. Crystal clear, beautiful fresh water. This is so beautiful. 
So we've just followed it up and it looks like we might have found the best pool yet. Whoa! Look how deep that section is. That is oh perfect. Should we get the boys and go for a swim? I think so. Such a luxury having fresh water. And your own waterfall. So good. Oh, hey! There you go, little mangrove jack. A bit small though, so we'll get him back in the water. Good to see though. How was the swimming spot? Oh, so good. good. 10 out of 10. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Must have been good to get in some fresh water. Oh. Crystal, crystal clear. It's beautiful. Yeah, right. I went over it, but it's too deep. I injured my pants, I literally fallen off and Jack yells at me I've got some big mullet, I've got some big mullet I can't get it over the rocks on a big skewer of mullet and I they, can't pull the net up Are they still in there? Yeah, there's two, I can see them here Oh, there's two here and one there Yeah, alright, this way Alright, ready? Yep they're, they're just here, they're just here You don't want to get out I've got two in my hand There's one there more one? Yeah, there's one more there Just gotta try to lift this net without. Oh, there's a third one! Oh, the fourth one! Ah, oh, they're spiking me! Get him? Yep. Diamond scar mullet! <laughs> Here we were trying to catch them on line. I know, big, beautiful mullet. A lot of people look down at these fish, but the diamond scales that are in this crystal clean water are beautiful and really white flesh. So we'll cut one up and you can have a look. That's lunch and dinner. We got a mullet! What do we got here, Jacko? We've got a freshwater spring coming out of the bush here and I've dug a little pool to get fresh water. But the beauty of this is it's really cool. Oh, wow. So Thanks. we keep the fish in here in the heat of the day to stay cool and then we'll eat them tonight. This, so this is, is our like fridge. Our, our bush esky. Our bush esky. Look at all these hermit crabs. Yeah. All these little hermit crabs just on the, the base of this freshwater stream coming out the back of the rocks. So for the best rice, I've just put a cup in there and then I washed it out a few times in the ocean with salt water. And I'm coming down here to a little fresh water hermit crab hole. We'll fill it up here. And because this is getting boiled, it'll be right. Hopefully it's all to drink. So literally just out the back of the crab shack that's been built here by some legend years ago, there is a freshwater swimming hole and it hasn't rained here in probably six months. And this is all pure fresh water, which is massively exciting. That's like a huge, huge benefit. Not that I want to show you me showering, but basically it's a huge novelty to have somewhere where you can like wash salt off your gear, your body, and use for cooking rice. And I'm sure if you followed it up, you can hear where it comes down at the back of this little snake hole you'd be able to follow it all the way up the uh the top to where it comes out of the, the mountain pretty cool what do we got corn geez lucky to have corn is that an egg yeah egg corn onion, egg garlic, onion garlic chili turmeric well, it's all this. happening down here in the crab shack sambal ikan bilis Woo! an essential <laughs> a little bit of puma oil rice chili turmeric ginger coconut oil green Green purple. We don't yep. have too many veggies, so. <laughs> We're eating all the veggies a couple of days in. Green purple works so well as a vegetable. Day one's usually when you're doing well, though. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Come see us in day 20. The tide's dropped out over the last three hours from right up at the crab shack all the way to 10, 12 meters in front of the boat, just rips out. I think, what, eight meter tides at the moment? Have a go at the size of that oyster. It's literally just about the size of my hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. <gasps> Look at the size of that oyster. <laughs> Imagine just like swallowing that. Oh, like, well, well, don't imagine oh, it. 
Do it. We do should it, get a lemon and bring it oh, down. Lemon, I'm gonna choke like, on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, so. that's actually like choking it's territory. Big black lip, hey? It's, it's a big oyster, big and oyster. you have big hands. It's a big oyster. I don't know if I can eat this whole thing. Death by oyster. Holy juice! Oh my god, that is like cute, more like than a cho mouthful. choking, like it's two mouthfuls. Like, do you reckon I can eat this whole thing? I, I'm. I believe you can. <laughs> it's just, you got oyster juice coming out your mouth. That was like a bit more oyster than you need in a mouthful. <laughs> but fresh and tastes good. Couple more. And that'll be the entree. There we go. One for the bag. Who does this one? It's a cascading waterfall. Any swimming holes? There's some. Um, on low tide, we've just walked around a couple of different bays and most of them just have fresh water like coming out of these like steep cliff escarpments where you can see most of the vegetation is growing, all this greenery. And then yeah, it's just like beautiful fresh water. Yeah, there's a swimming hole here. Oh, hell yeah. Straight out to the ocean. Plunge pool. Plunge pool. How's that? Room for two there, babe? Yeah. All right, I'm getting in. Plunge pool. <laughs> There's like a flood going on. Hey. Hey. Woo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely plunge pool. But is there room for four? Oh my god. Oh Jesus, dude, it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was so deep. You watched me do just, that! You, you watched me do that! It just swallowed me up. Yeah, you just all like, where's everywhere? Like, where are the waterfalls? They're like everywhere. That was so good! Cave in here full of dragonflies. And there's all these, yeah, some kind of fig roots coming down all the rocks. Very cool. Quite Those deep. Things you can eat. Oh, we got jibbed. It was empty. Classic. Someone yeah. else got it first. Robbed. And the, and the bottom. The bottom yeah, the bottom. that one. Oh. Some more epic matches. Oh. Yield. Salty. Yeah, okay. Um, that was... <laughs> How good is this? Oh, so good. <sighs> Crab shack where we're sleeping. Boats anchored out. Low tide. Sun's just set. Overall, good first day. Safe, well, got full mullet for dinner. We're winning. Hey, watch your head. So we've decided to come for a little walk up the escarpment behind camp. And for the most part, it's really, really good going where there's a lot of grip on the rock, but quite a bit of it as well is, is loose and shaly, so. Proceeding with caution, and no one warned me, but these spin effects are bloody spiky. But, magnificent view over this little bay that we're fortunate enough to be calling home. So I think the game plan now is oysters for entree, some mullet, and a bit of a cook up. Hopefully get a good sleep tonight, because we didn't last night. And then tomorrow morning, go further into this beautiful part of the world. Oh nice, how beautiful is that? Oh wow. There's two eagles hunting together right on sunset. Yeah, three days time, full moon. It looks like there's some, some different types of bush tucker. There's two different ones next to each other here. 
We've got a field guide, a little book that shows all the native bush tucker in different parts of Australia. So we'll go back down to camp and we'll check. We'll see if we can find if these are edible or were usable at all. I'm sure they are, but I'll just grab a, a branch so we can see the leaf. Looks like a little guava. It doesn't look ripe yet, but it's slightly just about to go yellow. Let's see what it is. We get a few oysters on for entree, hey? These yeah, These are the really. ones we got off the rocks today. I'm just putting them bottom down on a few coals. Waiting for you oh, crock bait. <laughs> you crock bait. No, I'm waiting for my oyster. <laughs> She's a <the> queen. <laughs> Had these on for probably just over 10 minutes and you can see how that shell has cracked. That means it's done. Ooh, that's hot. You can see in there. That's dinner. Oh, oh it's hard to get into. Oh, that is perfect. You want to cut around it? All right, brother. Yeah. You do the honors. Mmm. Love them when they're like a little bit smoky as well. So nice, like not as juicy, but it's got the like nice smoky flavour. That's my first one, I didn't get one, sub. Yeah, you're right. I could eat about 50 of them. No, I had about 50 last time. <laughs> That's so good. Alright, just going over to the fridge here. To get our main course. This one. Uh, a fair bit of heat coming on that now, but see those diamond scale mullet? They're one of the best to throw on the fire because their scales are quite thick and hard, so it can handle coals both under them and on the top. And then we've got the potatoes just in the flame room here, um, which I'd say are ready, eh, Jack? As a few of you know, we always keep a journal on these sorts of trips. So here's an insight into day one's log. It's been a solid effort getting to this point. One side of the country to the next. With the truck, the trailer, the gear, the fuel, the film equipment, and overall logistics to do it as safely as possible. In a couple of 14 foot boats. The desert meeting the sea, flies everywhere, huge tides, lack of shade. It's very different to home. Which, of course, is why we're here, to explore something new. But to be doing it with people close to me, my brother and Eva and Nikki, it's really special and I'm excited for what this trip will bring. I've grown up watching documentaries about the wild western frontier. It's always been a dream to experience this beautiful and unforgiving part of the country. Well, that's what I'm hoping for anyway. We'll see what tomorrow brings.